Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. It's been a little while. Um, my name is JK, thank you for tuning in. Go ahead and subscribe if you like what you see. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Go ahead and subscribe if you wanna get more content from me and turn on the notification bell right next to that button just so you can make sure that you get notified when I post a new video so you don't have to go looking for it. Today's video, we are actually going to be hitting on a previous topic that I recorded a couple of years ago about getting your first apartment. Um, based on the growth of that video, the comments, you know, the feedback that I've been getting over the past couple of years, I decided to go a little bit more in depth. Um, there are a few things that I did not touch on that I do want to go more, um, like I said, in depth on and give you a little bit more tea. So you can, again, if you are still in that process or if you're new to my channel and you have never seen that video, um, this is just like a brush up on the old one. But there are a few things that I really want you guys to know that I kind of, again, didn't really go too much into detail on, but we're going to hit them in this video. In the first video, I did mention some websites that you can use to search. You know, you don't have to go out unless you want to. You can definitely go out and look, but there are websites you can go to. And a few that I didn't mention before that are really good um, is Hot Pads. There's a Trulia, um, Rent.com, and also you want to Google local realtors. Now, these are um, realtor companies that actually have houses, you know, apartments, uh, property for sale or rent. And um, that's actually how I got this apartment. I went to, there's a local realtor here called Florno and Calhoun and they're very popular in this area. So um, I just went actually into their office. Well, first I called and then I went into their office to see what they had available. Um, I checked out some keys and went around and did some, um, some hunting. And that's how I found out that I wanted this apartment. So while you're, um, you know, once you decide where you're actually going to, or where you're interested in leasing or renting your apartment or a house, you want to ask for any kind of specials. Um, a lot of them do run specials, depending on what time of year it may be, you know, um, when they know the demand is high for new, you know, people moving, they usually offer specials. Uh, for example, mine was, you get half off of the first month's, first month's rent but just ask you know um if i mean most of the time it's pretty obvious like you know they may have a sign or something or um some kind of obvious advertisement but for the most part some of them don't advertise their specials because that's you know money that they're kind of missing out on which you know is like why well, have a special if you're not gonna let us know about it but you know ask and ye shall receive um before you you know start to apply remember in the first video i said you know you want to make sure that you um, actually have a chance at getting approved for the apartment before you pay an application fee a good way to know um, You know most of the requirements are going to be your income So they typically require you to have three times the rent. Um, and that's before taxes So, you know, they understand, you know, like you may have two to three hundred dollars come out in taxes So, you know, that's before taxes and then you have to have a pretty decent credit score um, or some kind of credit unless you have a co-signer, which is another person that can, that can like vouch for you to say, hey, you know, I know this person is, you know, um, gonna pay their rent and, you know, just in case they don't pay their rent, I might be able to help. That's really what a co-signer is supposed to be. Um, some people just go and get a co-signer just, just to get on, even though both of those people know that, you know, if shit hit the fan, it's like, well, you can't pay your rent, sorry. But, um, you know, if you are going about getting a co-signer, make sure that someone that actually can vouch for you and just in case you can't pay your rent they could help out so a parent you know um, a family member but it has to be it can't just be anyone they have to also meet those requirements they have to have a good credit score you know um, good income all of that so basically they would have what you lack that's what a co-signer is now um, if you did not have to get a co-signer um, that means you have pretty good credit and the only way to know is to check your credit so I recommend using what I use is creditkarma.com completely free it does not have any negative um, effect on your credit whatsoever um, they update well depending on what you have on your credit and who's reporting your credit score mine's usually updated like every couple of weeks so i can go in and see a difference whether it went down or it went up and they run um transunion i believe and equifax which are two different credit monitoring systems i believe and um there might be one more I'm missing, but those are the two that I always see when I log in. So I recommend go ahead and check checking your credit before so that way you don't have a surprise or you go spend again the money on that application fee. And and I'm so sorry, y'all. They're doing some kind of yard work or something out there. So please forgive me because, yeah. But And I'm off today, thank God, because if I was in here trying to take calls, that would be very annoying. But anyway, back on topic. Um, yes, you want to make sure you check your credit before so that way you're not surprised or you keep spending all this money on these different applications and they're turning you down because of your credit. So go ahead and know your credit score. 
know what it is and then if it's you know if you know it's not good go ahead and look into either building it you know waiting depending on how much time you have um, look into um, a co-signer or building your credit you know over time or just cleaning that up before you jump back in to go ahead and apply for a new apartment if you're moving in with a roommate and um, we didn't talk about roommates I could make a whole video on that process alone because depending on if you've ever had an apartment how old you are um, your gender there's so many different factors to having a roommate um, so the thing that I really just wanted to mention in this video is to make sure that you and your roommate both have sat down and clearly written out a budget, um, you know, before you guys are looking for an apartment. Now, if you're both, you know, looking to get a new apartment, that means this is where this is um, applicable. If you're just moving in with someone that's already, you know, living there, that's kind of, that's a different process. And if you guys want me to make a video on that, I totally can because um, I've, you know, I've never moved in with someone else, but I have had roommates. So I know how the process works. For this video, basically what I want you to do is, just like you were doing it alone, include that person in everything that you do because you guys are gonna be um, co-applicants. Like you'll both, ha both have to sign, excuse me, you'll both have to sign um, the application or do your own applications because you're two different people. You'll both have, you know, different things that need to be checked. Uh, but you want to do it together. You want to go through that process completely together because you don't want, you know, you don't want to not be on the same page. You guys want to be on the exact same page in the same book in the same library. So do that together. You know, be very clear and communicate with each other. Don't leave any room for question or um, misinterpretation. Um, you know, just make sure you both have decided on a comfortable budget. Like, don't let the if you guys don't have the same income, you know, decide, OK, you make a little bit more. You can get the bigger bedroom or, you know, you make a little bit more. Would you be more comfortable paying a little bit more on the um, the amenities or, you know, just small stuff like that? Just have those conversations prior to, you know, starting the process. That way you guys have the same, you know, mindset when you go in, when you go talk to people, because honestly, another thing is, um, Leasing agents, you know, people uh, at apartments, um, tenants or whatever, they don't they don't just take anyone. Just like you can be selective about where you go, they can be selective about who they allow in their, you know, space. So, you know, if they see that you guys are not on the same page or there may be an issue, they could decline your request. You know, that's not illegal on their end. They, again, just like you have a choice, they have a choice as well. So you want to make sure you're very um, level headed when you go into this process, you know, mind clear. I'm very focused, sober. Um, I mean, you'd be surprised. You want to do all of that, you know, and if you have another person with you, you want to make sure they're also following that same um so, you know process you guys want to be on the same level clearly um just boom all right that's all i had to say about that uh going that was really all i had about pre-apartment once you get your apartment or you're starting the um you know the leasing process where you actually get in there you want to ask about your neighbors now this may not seem like a big deal but it is a huge deal when you go um even before you even decide just when you're going to view the property ask about the neighbors are there any neighbors um if you're going to be in a complex like me it's only four units in this building but if you live somewhere where there's like four floors and then you know there's like four people around you you want to say hey does anyone live here um you know is it an older person i mean you don't they're probably not going to give you details like yeah her name's samantha appleseed and she is 41 and she has five cats there you're not going to get all that i mean honestly i don't know but <laughs> i don't think you're going to get all that but they can at least tell you yeah there's a woman that lives there or um, you know like do they have any children uh, because if stuff like if you work from home I work from home now and it's very important that I have a very quiet space exhibit a this I mean I can't control the yard you, you know the people doing the yard work but if my neighbor um, to the right of me had kids and they were like up screaming and stuff that's something I would want to know you know because I work from home and I can't have all of the background noise so um, even if you don't work from home if you just don't like noise ask about your neighbors because it will matter um, you know a lot of units don't allow smoking inside like who most people won't even know but there are a lot of people that can't be around smoke so if that's you you know you want to ask okay does are any of these other units able to be smoked in because I don't want it coming through my vents or vice versa you know if you smoke and they don't you don't want to you know get um, penalized or you don't want to have them call the police because you wanted to smoke and they smelled it because that does happen so just asking about your neighbors and any, I mean, any neighboring 
apartment. So below you, above you, to the right, to the left, whatever the case may be, you definitely want to ask um, what's up with those people because that's going to really dictate you know your mood sometimes um my last apartment for example there was a dog in the apartment under me that would never shut the fuck up like he barked all day every day and i thought some like initially i thought the person the owner was dead and i'm not even kidding y'all it he barked for like a whole day straight so i went and called the i'm leasing i'm like i'm just concerned at this point i know i mean usually the dogs will shut up but i'm like i don't know if somebody like abandoned the dog or someone is down there like dead or some shit because the way he was barking was like, you know, something was really wrong. So they weren't actually dead. They just were ancient neighbors and didn't care. Well, they didn't realize how loud the dog was. But everybody in the whole thing could hear. I was just the only one that said something. But anyway, you want to ask about your neighbors because that could determine whether you're up at 2 a.m. because they're playing loud music or what. When you're touring your apartment uh, for the first time, I know this is going to sound really crazy. Like, are you serious? But... Y'all pay attention to small stuff like whether the apartment has a microwave, okay? Now, I'm so used to apartments automatically having things like a microwave and like, you know, lighting in the in the living room or something. But a lot of them still don't have, you know, those things already installed, um, like dishwasher, you know, those types of appliances. Um, because this apartment, I actually, I was so excited to find it because I was trying to hurry up and make a transition to something cheaper. Um, I did not, I don't even know how I didn't think about it because I toured the apartment by myself. I had to check out a key and come and tour it. Um, I, I completely missed it. So I got here and <laughs> like my first like few nights, I forgot. I was actually still in the old apartment. So when I would come here, I never had to eat. I would eat there and do everything there because it was closer to work. Um, but when I actually moved uh, in officially that first night, I realized because I had, I had bought fast food, I believe, or something. And I realized I didn't have a microwave, so I had to go buy one. So um, just little small stuff like that. And again, I know it may seem silly, but it completely slipped my mind. So that's what I'm telling y'all. So you don't do the same thing. Um, and then just like, again, lighting. My living room doesn't have um, lighting, like legit lighting, like a light at the top. So um, I use like Christmas lights. Um, I use those in all rooms. I have them in here too, just because I like them. And um, I mean, I was going to do that anyway. <laughs> But just if that's something that bothers you or you want lighting, pay attention to that too. You know, because especially if you're touring the apartment during the day, you're not going to think to just flip on the lights. Hopefully the tenant or whoever you're doing the walkthrough with will do that for you. But, um, I mean, hmm, I don't know. Just pay attention to stuff like that because you'd be surprised. All right, as far as your rent goes, um, depending on when you move in, there's something called a prorated fee. And this is really the only fee that I didn't go over, I believe. Well, it's rent. Rent is a fee, but so I guess that kind of counts. But I didn't go too much into detail on the first video. Let's say, for example, if you moved in, you know, there's a whole month, the first through the 30th or 31st, or depending on the month, there's that whole month. Let's say you move in on the 10th. Um, they can't charge you for that first nine days because you didn't live there. So they prorate it. They, um, you know, take off a certain percentage or a certain amount based on the full rent. And like, you know, that they do that calculation and you only are responsible for paying the remaining amount. So when you're trying to calculate your move in expenses, um, depending on what day you move in or what day you sign your lease, that'll determine how much your first month's rent actually will be. So you won't be paying, let's say your rent is uh, $750 a month and you actually don't move in until the 15th which is like half the month your rent should only be half for that first month and then of course you know for the, the months to come you're gonna have to pay the full thing but typically you have before you move in you have to have the first month's rent and also your security deposit so when you're calculating your expenses you can go ahead and like consider the prorated amount rather than the whole thing now it wouldn't hurt to just go ahead and budget in the whole thing because I feel like better safe than sorry but if you know you really like right there on the money and you know you are kind of concerned that you may not have it all go ahead and you know make sure you factor in the fact that if you're not moving in on the first then there's a high chance that your rent is going to be prorated pest control oh my gosh pest control this is like i wish this could be the biggest thing um or i don't know i'm making it the biggest thing y'all okay you want to make sure that I mean, if you like bugs, hey, you like bugs, but I don't think you do. Because if you do, again, I don't know. But you want to ask initially, is pest control going to be included in my, you know, rent and everything? Or am I responsible for my own? This is huge. Again, especially if you do not like bugs, roaches, um, freaking fleas, freaking fly, anything, ants, like 
rodents, just the little, little spiders, ooh, ooh, God. And you wanna know um, how often they come around, If do you have to hit them up, like, hey, is, you know, I would like you to come spray, um, whatever. You wanna make sure you are A1 with the pest control and know how that's gonna work, because that could be one of the worst things. Like, if a squirrel happens to get in your house, Who's gonna get that out? Like, I don't know how to remove squirrels. I had a lizard in my house. I don't know where it is now. It's either dead or it's like hiding somewhere. I think it just might be my pet now because it's been like a month. Um, I saw it not too long ago. Well, no, that was like a couple of weeks ago. So as of now, I don't know if it's dead or what, but I, I haven't killed it, so it's somewhere. Yeah, pest control. Uh, you gotta know this stuff because even like, oh, that goes back to the neighbors. If your neighbors are nasty, they probably have roaches. And the moment you move in and those roaches smell some food, they're gonna wanna go find it. They're like, I know she's making chicken Alfredo again, so let's go see what the new girls got. That smells like some seafood. You know, like, <laughs> I feel like that's how roaches and, and bugs think, but you wanna, you wanna go over your pest control in the very, very beginning, like all of it. Ask them questions, even if you can't say, hey, when's the last time this was, this apartment was sprayed? You know, was there ever a bug issue here? Like, did anyone have bed bug? Like, that's a big one, bed bugs. Um, I don't, I don't really know where they come from. But if someone in your apartment had bed bugs prior to you being there, you, that's something you want to know because if they arise in the event, like you, you know for a fact it wasn't you. Because um, again, I don't know where they come from. I think they're already there, and then they just come back. I'm not even sure. But um, if anyone's ever had like a, a bug problem, like bed bugs or roaches. Ask them, like, has this apartment ever been infested? And that's something you need to know. And if you're still comfortable living there, just make sure that they bomb it or take care of it before you move in. Or, um, you know, if you're not comfortable, that'll just let you know I can check this off my list and keep moving. Okay, when it comes to your internet and cable provider, if you're moving to a new apartment, like you, um, let's say you live with your parents and you guys had Mediacom or, you know, a certain internet provider and you really like the way it works and you like the price and you decided, okay, when I move into my apartment, this is the company that I want to go with. A lot of companies actually don't service certain areas. So once you get the address or the area of where you'll be moving, check with that provider to make sure they even um, provide services in that area because you're going to be in a whole world of whole world of hurt if you you just automatically assume like yeah i can you know start with them there's a high chance that you know they may not service that area and you wait you might have to pay a little bit more with another company because you know that's all that's available and also some apartments require you to have a certain um, provider anyway like my last apartment we had to have what's called Wow I think that's actually a type of Comcast um, I forgot the actual name but anyway Wow is who they required so I had to have them which worked out well because they it was actually pretty cheap and I really liked their service so it never really went out and stuff like that but um, that's something you want to ask about like do you require a certain internet and cable provider if they say no then go with who you want but if you go with who you want you want to make sure that that company itself is actually even available in your area and usually you can just go online and um, check like is um, again like Mediacom is Mediacom available in enter zip code like that and then that'll let you know or you can just call and ask more fees I'm sorry I completely forgot about these fees if you're for the first time getting um, your first opening your first electric account like um, I live in Georgia so we have Georgia power if this is your first time getting Georgia power you actually do have to pay a deposit and you don't get that back um, unless well you I'll go over that in a minute but um, you pay that in full that's not like something that you know as soon as you move in you get it back no you my deposit when I first got my first um, electric bill was like two hundred dollars same thing with gas and water now water was included so I didn't have to do it with that but um, we have we have what's called Liberty Utilities here for gas if you have to pay gas for your apartment a lot of them are completely electric and don't include a gas bill but if you do it's the same thing with the electric once you open an account you have to put a deposit in there and that doesn't go towards your first bill um, it doesn't go towards anything it's just sitting there until you disconnect services but here's the catch you most of them will not give you your deposit back if you are ever late on a bill if you ever have to do an extension because you can pay on time that's when they are like oh gotcha this is our money now um so the only time you really get those back is if you pay your bill on time every month like not even 30 minutes late you never have to request like an extension or anything even if you request the extension and you still pay it by that date you still don't get your deposit back because you didn't pay on the original due date 
And also, a lot of apartments don't let you move in until you've opened those accounts. So um, even like here, they wouldn't have let me move in. Like I had to have a gas bill account number and a um, power account number tied to this address before they let me actually move in. Basically from that whole thing I'm saying, um, be prepared to pay a couple more deposits if you've never had an electric um, account or power account or gas or water. It may be just electric, but it all depends on what's not included in your rent. So again, for example, my rent is, um, what's included in my rent is water, but I have to pay my own electric bill and my own gas bill. And um, those were two, well I've already, I already had account for electricity so I didn't have to do a new deposit. But for gas, I never had a gas bill so I had to pay like, I think that one was like $300. And um, that's all it is, just to turn it on, you know, and start services. And again, you don't get that back unless you pay on time every month until you move out. That's very, very important because if at any point one of those services is disconnected, your, your, the property owner has the right to terminate your lease because they want you to have all of those things connected at all times. So let's say for example, your, um, you couldn't pay your, your gas bill and it got, your gas got cut off. They could say, hey, you know, it was a requirement for you to have gas in this apartment at all times. So if you can't get that turned back on within five days, we're going to have to um, kick you out. Basically, we're going to evict you. And, you know, there's not really much you can do because most likely it's in your lease somewhere where you signed it. So, again, like I said in the first video, read your lease. Don't leave out any part of it. Read the whole thing. If you have to make copies, do that. If you have to have somebody else read it, do that. But read what you're signing because you are literally giving consent to all of these things that you don't even know about if you're not reading it. So read your lease and know what your penalties are for situations like that. Like if you happen to not, you know, you hit, you, you were in a bind and you couldn't pay your gas bill and it got cut off. Um, you don't want to get put out just because you don't have gas, which even if you didn't need it, they don't care. You could say, well, I don't really need gas right now. Like, can I stay here? They're like, no. We said that needed to be a requirement because they don't want to be um, held responsible or they don't want to be liable if something were to happen in result of you not having gas. Like, you know, I don't know what that could be because it's really just hot water and heat, I believe. But like if you froze to death in your apartment because you didn't have a heater, this is a really extreme example. But if you froze to death, they don't want to be like, well, she said she didn't need gas, so we didn't, we didn't care. No, they're going to say, well, it was a requirement for her to have gas. And she had like five days left, and she froze to death, and we told her she was going to be evicted because we didn't want that. We didn't want that responsibility. We didn't want people saying, girl died at so-and-so properties because she didn't have any heat. Like, they don't want that. They don't want those problems, so that's why that's a requirement for most places. All right, y'all, so that was actually all I had for this video. I know it was way shorter than the first one, but again, this was just like a little bit more in depth on each topic that I kind of didn't go too much into detail on that I saw some people asking about in the comments from the first video. Um, I will link that video in the description and I'm gonna try to link it in this video somewhere like now. Um, so yeah, if you guys wanna, if you wanna either do the roommate video, please let me know. Um, I'm only gonna film that by request because I don't want to just film it and upload it and nobody watch it or um, if you want an in-depth on furniture, shopping for your first um, pieces of furniture, electronics, uh, you know, furnishing your apartment. We can do that as well, but you have to let me know. So thank you so much for tuning in. I love you guys, and I hope you all are having a blessed, blessed in day, week, whatever. Um, again, subscribe, like this video, share it if you think somebody could use it, and leave me some comments, uh, give me some feedback. I do like to interact with you all in the comments. And yeah, I hope you have a good day. I love you and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.